day two of the Randox Grand National Festival at Aintree. We're previewing it. David Ord in the company of Ben Linfoot and Kieran Clark. Hello. Good, good afternoon, Scoop. Let's Very have enthusiastic. Look. Yeah, you're more enthusiastic. You're, you're for day one. This is yeah. a really good sign. Let's get the ratings up for the big race of the day. It's the Melling Chase. Uh, an interesting renewal as well because, Kieran, we've got John Bond stepping up to two and a half miles. This is one of the races of the week, I think, Dave. Um, I can't wait for this. So, John Bond... Where do you start with John Bond? Obviously got beat in the rearranged Clarence House. We'll blame that on the fact that Hendos were just starting to go out of form, I think. Um, he had no... So the jockey just did, they, they didn't click, did he, from a very yeah. early stage? It was, he made that really bad mistake. Was it four out? One of, he hadn't one jumped of well up till then. Well, exactly, either, yeah. And then he rushed him back up into the lead and then he's got collared by uh, Elixir de Nuts um, in the I end. Vince's favourite horse, go. <laughs> I nearly said that. Um yeah, so he's he heads the ratings, but then you've got the Ryanair one two protector at an envoy Allen, who uh, served up a classic at Cheltenham, and um, yeah, it's a race I'm I'm really really looking forward to. You got Pick Dory in there as well, who mm. I was a bit lukewarm on him last time, but he um, he was impressive and he he won this last year. The only thing with Pick Dory is last year he beat Fakir Dudere. This is a it looks a field. tougher race, yeah. But it's a big race in this trainers' title battle, Nichols v. Skelton, um, protector, are you convincing that Ryanair that this is his trip? Is he, is he going to underline it? Well, he's 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 massively unexposed over it, isn't he? And it was a, a step forward to win the Ryanair chase. So you can see, I mean, Dan Skelton will have had a dilemma. Will it be the bowl? Will it be this race? And he's gone for the melon. And, and you can sort of see why. Not, stepping back up to three miles, it would have been tough for him, I think, against the likes of Jerry Kalam, Brave Man's Game. But... Two and a half, there still be might might be more to come from him. And we know he likes Aintree as well, and the ground's in his favour, considering the trip. So I can absolutely see why he's gone for this race. And he's a, a fascinating strand in, you know, like Kieran said, it's a really good renewal. Fascinating race. Go on, give us give us the bet, Kieran. Uh probably John Bon at five to two. Um you know, the times he's been beaten before um his latest defeat were against top 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 opposition, El Fabiola and the likes, and uh yeah, I just think he's probably going to win. Will I back him at five to two? Yeah, I probably would actually. Like as like we said on the on the first day, like the what how Henderson's run on the first day will really impact the market because if he has a few winners, I can see a few shorteners. Um, I mean, if you're looking for a value, each real scumbag each way, but by Allen at eleven to two is probably that. But um, I like uh, I like John Monnet at five to two. It's cool. I think. Having said all that about Protectorat, I think... You said a lot. <laughs> well, I think he might be vulnerable to a genuine, speedy two-and-a-half miler. That could be John Bon. It could be Pete Dory. I think it's between those two. Um, I think Pete Dory on a on a flat two-and-a-half miles is a very good horse, but John Bon looks the class act in this race, and if he brings his A-game, I expect him to win. Just just a quick one on John Bon as well, for anyone who doesn't know already, he gets very worked up in the preliminaries. So if you see him do that, that is just him. He does it. I'd be more worried if he didn't do it. So there we are. There are two votes for John Bond in that Melling Chase. Top novices hurdle. We've got the time from ratings um, for this as well. A, a grade one contest. Um, very tight at the top. The Skybet Supreme second and third. Mystical Power and Firefox. A pound between them. Golden A. Such a great winner. That Mayor's Novice hurdle at the Fez as well there. 157p. Fascinating race, school. Yeah, it is. Obviously, the, the Skybet Supreme form. Um, comes to the table here, the second and the third, Mystical Power and Firefox. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if Firefox reversed that form. Um, found a little bit of troubling running and uh, finished his race well for third that day, as if he had more to give. So, wouldn't be surprised, yeah, if those placings were reversed. Mystical Power, obviously, by Galileo, out of any power, he couldn't get better breeding than that on the, over the jumps, could you? And, I think he's a good horse. Whether he's as good as his mum, I'm not sure. She was an absolute top notcher, wasn't she? So he's got a lot to do to to get to that sort of standard. And I just wonder if it was, you know, was it a deep, was it a good renewal of the Skybet Supreme? We will find out over the next 12 months. But I'd be happy to uh, take on that form in this race. Going with the mares? Yeah. Dysart or Golden Ace? Well, I was really impressed with Golden Ace at Cheltenham. She's got gears. 
I was impressed with her as well, but obviously Dice Enos put her in a place in the nickel yep. coin at uh, this bumper, meeting yeah. last year, and you just wonder if if that's a significant form boost. And obviously it was unfortunate Dice Enos missed Cheltenham. It looked such a good plan from Fergal O'Brien to avoid the the penalty getting her there, and obviously a, a late setback ruled her out of the race. But we could see uh, her true colours in the, in this race, and getting the seven pound from the from the Geldings could be key. Before we get Kieran's selection, Kieran, we've got the video of that Skybet Supreme here. Mystical yeah. power in the JP. Looked all over the winner, what landing in front at the last. Do you think this is a horse who's got one run here? Do you think they'll play him for a quick and instant turn of foot at Aintree, or do you think it was just the way that this race unfolded? No, I think they will, Dave. So Mystical power is in the star on the cap. Um, there's Firefox number three in the red cap, like Scoop said. He, he found yeah, a bit of trouble just, just there. Uh, so I was about just after the last hurdle, and when they came to jump the last, I thought Mystical Power had, had come to win. Um, he, he briefly took it up just here as Slade Steel got into the, into the bottom of the last, and then Slade Steel rallied up the hill. Now, entry is currently soft, heavy in places, but with, there's not much rain due, and it does dry very quick. I'm not saying it's going to be good to soft, but I don't think it's going to be bottomless ground, and I think this is the best bet of the week, Mystical Power. I think he'll go 6-4. to four. Firefox wasn't closing, was he? The gap no. between them. No, but that. he did find that bit of yeah, yeah. running and he just looked like us. That his momentum was stopped to such an extent that I think he's better than that. He'll make a and lovely chase next year. Could close that gap. Fasc fascinating to see. Cool power for me, definitely. Um, I want to get the name of the the mild main novice chaser, three mile novice chaser opens a card. Now this is a fascinating bet in here. It wouldn't be the strongest grade one uh, ever run, but we've got various strands of handicap form coming into it. Scoop, including this Chianti Classico winning the ultimate at Cheltenham for Kim Bailey. And horses have come out of handicaps to win this before. Absolutely, he's uh, red cap nose band on the inside. Um, excellent run this day. Thought he jumped really well and uh, and crucially stayed really well. This is a um, very similar trip. And uh, I think this is probably, we're going to go through lots of handicap form in this race. I think this is probably the deepest handicap form we're going to look at. It wouldn't be the most impressive winner. That would be, I know the way you're thinking in the Kim Yard, but I think this is the deepest form and it wouldn't surprise me if he, if he won this race uh, for Kim Bailey. Kieran, there's, as I said, there's various strands coming into this. Not much grade one form, but plenty of interesting, strong, seemingly handicap form lines. Where would you be heading? I think you've got to start with I know the way you're thinking, what he did in that Kim Muir, where he was backed like defeat was out of the question. To go off 13 to 8 in a 22 runner Cheltenham handicaps madness. Now, I think he's going to end up in next year's Grand National. And just his jumping was a bit sticky early on. I thought even have pulled him up early doors. Yeah, I mean, he, he was, was slow and out to yeah. his right. He lost quite a lot of ground. Now, that was three miles to this is three mile on a sharper track. And yes, he's got some really good form behind Gaelic Warrior earlier in the season. He improved for that step up in trip last time. He's related to Limerick Lace, who I think Matt Walsh is going to ride in the National, which is interesting. Yeah, he definitely, yeah, does ride. I just think he's too short, two to one. Um, I think Giovinco might have won that ultimate. I was all over him anti post, and they ran him in the what used to be RSA. Uh, Brown Advisory, is it now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, third to Monty Star of um, Henry de Bromeds and Factor File. Now, I think we could be talking about these two lining up in a Gold Cup next year. Giovinco in the 40s. He ran an absolute stormer. And he's he's currently joint outsider of the field at 8-1. to one. And, Entry form, hasn't he? Yeah, and I just don't understand why he's such a big price. You've got Hartwood in there as well, who was really impressive, and he won at the DRF, but he steps up in trip. But the fact that Rocco's only 4-1, to one, he was coming off a layoff when he ran behind Ginny's Destiny and Grey Dornin. He got beat over three mile uh, in a grade one here this meeting last year. I just can't understand why Giovinco's eight, nine to one. I just thought he was massively overpriced. He'll do for me. Great stuff. Interesting section. I know Mystical Power is Kevin's best bet for the day. Bet of the week. Bet Linfoot. Give us a bet for Friday. You got one in the top of him or? I haven't got one in the top of him. Bowen's no. Is anything in the stat draw? Is the stat draw claim yeah, calls for the yeah, Friday? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing in the stat draw. Uh, we need to go through the top him. I'm going to go with Chianti Classico. I, th oh, I, I, was, I was impressed with him good. in the Ultima. And um, I think he can take the, the step forward into grade one company. He could end up sort of a proper like Hennessy type, couldn't he? Yeah. Um, progress through the ranks, yeah. You do need to jump on that mile mode course as well, don't you? need to be into a rhythm round there. You don't want to be warming to your task. Well, there we are. There's the thoughts of Kevin and Ben on Friday's action at Danger. And do check out myself, Ben, and Phil Turner going through the Grand National Field with our pin stickers guide to Saturday's great race too. Download the Sporting Life app 
for the best racing coverage, including live racing blogs, fast results, stable tours, trainer and jockey interviews, expert opinion and tips. 